Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics and this is the IWI X95 bullpup rifle. Based on the Tavor, uh, the predecessor to the SAR, you have a bullpup chambered 5.56223, the 1 and 7 twist 16 inch barrel in a bullpup configuration. This rifle uh, has ambi magazine release and it has, uh, I guess technically, an ambi bolt release. Bolt release being back here at the rear. Uh, for the review process, my 2000 round review process, I mounted a Tango 6T and a Unity Tactical mount with an offset 508 from Holosun and went with a Cloud Defensive Rain. You've probably seen a video recently where I did a bullprop review and I figured, you know, I checked out the Desert Tech MDRX and I'd go ahead and give another look at the offering from IWI. Previously, I'd shot their guns and not so much my feelings on bullpup, but just my feeling on that gun in particular. I didn't come away with a good feeling. It's not something I wanted to own. It's some, not something I necessarily wanted to shoot. Bullpups have their own unique issues. One being manual of arms. They are remarkably slower or noticeably slower or definitively slower uh, manual of arm process than what you get from a traditional AR slash M16 setup. Uh, another issue is the fact that you get dental work every time you pull the trigger. So even though we're only shooting 223 mostly during the review process, my cheek weld, I'm definitely feeling that bolt carrier group doing its thing. Another thing that initially kind of gave me concern is the fact that it's not, I don't have a suppressor setting on this gun and I'm going to shoot it suppressed. Now there are appeals to bullpups, the main one being that you get a whole lot of barrel length in a much shorter package. So I've got a 16 inch gun here that is shorter than what I'd get from like an 11.5 12.5 in a traditional configuration. So there's some trade off there. So even when mounting a suppressor, and because it's a 16 inch barrel, you can get away with a, with a K configuration suppressor and still have pretty good hearing attenuation, hearing suppression, uh, sound suppression, I should say. With a full size suppressor, you still have a very short gun, very compact package, very totable, very storable. Um, there's definitely some appeal to that and even though there's a trade-off there you're gonna you're gonna slow down your reload or your malfunction clearance processes based on the manual of arms on the gun but you're gaining a lot more maneuverability which is one of the reasons why these guns still have appeal to certain types of people certain types of governments certain types of military units although it is telling that you don't see these in use uh, even though they've been around for a long time as much as maybe some people would expect uh, but i was going to go ahead and put it through the 2000 round review process and see what i felt how i felt about the x95 so for the first 500 rounds, I just got a feel for the gun. Uh, went through the manual of arms process. I will say that having the bolt release mounted right there by the magazine well is useful in the fact that as I insert the magazine, I can flag my thumb out and hit that release once the magazine seats. It's annoying in the fact that that's the only way I can release the bolt uh, efficiently. Um, I don't really care for that. Now, of course, I can run the charging handle as well to release the bolt. And that does give me a little bit of, I guess, saving grace in, in the fact the manual of arms. There's two ways to do things, which I do prefer. Magazine release is actually pretty excellent. It is ambi and it is very efficient. Uh, keeping in mind that the button's here, but the actual release mechanism is back here, which is how the trigger works. And I think most people who are familiar with bullpups will say triggers are terrible or triggers are mediocre when compared to traditional AR triggers. And those people are not wrong. There are aftermarket options, but I was looking at the OEM factor. First thing is the grip. I feel like the grip is something that I would get on a wand that I would use at a car wash, not on a gun. The trigger is something I would expect from a caulking gun, not on an actual firearm. So within that first 500 rounds, I hated the grip and I hated the trigger. The trigger does work and it's not a bad pull but it feels like I'm sealing a window or putting in tile in my bathroom, not actually shooting bullets down range out of a 16 inch barrel. Uh, after that first 500 rounds, just getting a little bit familiar and I was coming off of doing the review of the MDRX, so I was still pretty fresh on my manual of arms, my familiarity, my practice reps, if you will, on a bullpup. So transferring over to that, didn't see any significant advantage or say speed advantage in reloads of this versus other bullpups. And it's definitely 
relatively speaking, slower than what I'm getting off a traditional AR, but we're not comparing, I'm just bringing it up because some people might want to mention it or might want to ask about it. Brings us to the burn now. 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if that accelerated rate of fire will identify any issues that I wouldn't notice with the same round count over a much longer period of time. So four minutes versus four hours, four weeks, four, to four months, whatever. Here's your burn now. Burn down went well, except didn't have any malfunctions, but I'm pretty sure I had at least one out of battery detonation. I'm not entirely sure what happened. It didn't cause any damage to the gun. It actually didn't even interrupt the cycle of fire. I interrupted it. I had um, basically a gigantic fireball come out in this general vicinity, which is, you know, is right there next to my face. So it gave me a little concern. I was like, hmm, I might want to check that out. Uh, I don't know what it was, didn't cause any damage to the gun, didn't interrupt the cycle of fire, it could have just been an ammunition related issue. The ammunition that I use for burn down is always the highest quality I can get because I don't want a problem to arise and then wonder, is it the gun, is it the ammo? So I use the highest quality ammunition I get. In that case, I was using a Federal 55 grain and that ammo I'd been using for burn downs for years and I don't think I've ever seen that type of issue arise. I don't think it was the ammunition, but I don't know for sure. And because it didn't cause any, am any damage to the gun, went ahead and kept on with the review process, working the gun into my normal everyday range, another thousand rounds after that. Uh, I wanted to shoot it suppressed, and this is where I get really, really disappointed. So uh, first thing I did was decide, you know, okay, which suppressor am I gonna use? And I was like, you know what, let me, let me grab two cans, let me grab two of my suppressors, or three of my suppressors, and run uh, rounds on each of them to see if different suppressors behave in different ways. So the first suppressor I put on there was a Surefire RC2, the SOCOM 2, and good God, this thing was gassy. It was uncomfortable to shoot, and I just felt like someone was blowing cheap cigar smoke in my eyes while I was working through the gun. And if there was just a right amount of breeze, I would briefly forget for a moment the abusive relationship I was in, and then the wind would change, and I'd be right back just sucking all of that stuff in. And as you know, the state of California probably would say I have cancer at this point because of the amount of uh, smoke I inhaled. The 300 blackout version of this gun has an adjustable gas, and it's not necessarily for the suppressor uh, aspect, but it does have it. I don't understand why this one doesn't. Uh, I need a suppressor setting, so can I please get a suppressor setting because I want to shoot suppressed. I understand not everyone is going to purchase a suppressor and use it, but enough people are that enough companies that the, almost uh, everybody else in the piston world anyway makes suppressor settings or incorporates suppressor settings into their guns, and I just don't have it with this. So with the Surefire can, definitely not cool. So one of the solutions to gas problems with suppressors is to use a different type of suppressor, and the solution for that is the Huxwork suppressors. Previously known as OSS, they use a flow-through technology. I've got a couple of guns that have gas behaviors that are not ideal for traditional monocore or baffle stack suppressor design, where the OSS Huxworks will run them great. So I went ahead and tried out my K configuration and my full size. Uh, shooting again suppressed, changed out muzzle devices and put about 500 rounds, the last 500 rounds of the review were all suppressed with those two suppressors. And the gas is better, it's more manageable, the recoil impulse changes, it's a little bit softer, but it still feels like the gun is trying to beat itself up a little bit, and of course the gas is still noticeable versus other fire. Of course the final thing to talk about, accuracy. Uh, 
Another one of those things you hear when people bring up bullpups is they're not as accurate as traditional guns, and I found that to be very true. But I wanted to give this thing a shake. Uh, because I mounted a 1-6 to six on it, I was zeroing at 100 yards. Uh, well, actually zeroed at 100 meters because I'm using metric scope with metric uh, BDC. So I went ahead and zeroed it on 77 grain Atlanta Arms TMK. Here's my five round group fired after zero for confirmation uh, at the zero distance with the 77 grain from Atlanta Arms, the TMK round. I mean, that's pretty disappointing. It, it's, it's, I, I don't know, like you could use the term like, oh, it's mil-spec, because yeah, mil-spec's form away. Uh, it might still be, I'm not sure. When I was in the military, mil-spec accuracy was form away out of a traditional infantryman's rifle. Uh, I don't know if that's changed, probably hasn't. Maybe it has. Um, I would expect more out of a 16-inch gun um, that <laughs> costs what this thing costs. I can buy slightly cheaper rifles that have greater performance, no gas problems, uh, better accuracy, and just very disappointed. Uh, I would expect to shoot an MOA, maybe one and a half MOA, maybe two MOA, but consistently when grouping this gun, that was the result I was getting. In fact, after I finished the review, 2,000 rounds, I broke the gun down, cleaned it all out, came back to the range. In fact, I just shot the group 20 minutes ago. I shot another five round group, went the gun completely sledded in bag, taking almost all the human factor out of it, and the accuracy wasn't really any better. So as far as accuracy goes, yeah, you're gonna be able to hit minute of man at, at reasonable distances, but for what you pay for this thing, I would expect more. Uh, other little features that I didn't really care for, I really didn't mention it because it wasn't an issue in the review. It has integral backup sights, which fold down into the rail, which is kind of cool at first glance, but then you factor like, well, what if I need to mount accessories in those places? It's got the, the three, nine, and six o'clock removable rail panels, which is something that I did in order to mount accessories, because I'm gonna, every gun's gonna get a weapon light. And because of the nature of the way this gun is, its length and its lack thereof of hand placement and extended rail for the type of way that I'm traditionally gonna shoot or most likely gonna shoot, I wanted to mount a VFG on there as well. So it's nice that those rails are incorporated. I didn't have to buy an aftermarket rail or anything like that. It was actually pretty comfortable to shoot even though the weight's all at the back. But if I was gonna have to use iron sights, I'd have to be very careful about where I mounted my accessories because I would cover them up and then I couldn't flip them up and use them. Not a big deal for me because like I said, mounted a one to six. I've got my backup sight right here on the side with my, uh, with my RDS. Uh, but it would have been nice if, I mean, if they just didn't include that. Maybe save a little money on the overall production, and if you wanted to flip up sights, you just put them on there yourself, just like you would with any other gun. Not the case. <sighs> Gassy, terrible trigger. I don't understand the... Um, this gun was definitely designed by a committee, and at least half of that committee were not shooters. Uh, may not even be an engineers, I'm not sure. Uh, and I, I don't know, that might hurt some, some hardcore X95 fans' feelings out there, but again, this is my subjective review of this product. Um, if you were looking for a bullpup, this is not the one I would recommend. It's a decent gun for functionality. I didn't really have any issues except, like I said, during the burn down, that possible out of battery detonation, which could have been ammunition related. Uh, but just my overall feeling with the gun is buy something else. I mean, there's other bullpups out there that perform better uh, at maybe a little bit more money. This thing is inexpensive for what it is compared to the pricing that you see from other bullpups, but the money you're saving is going to add into your aggravation with necessarily getting it zeroed. If you're only going to shoot on a 25 yard range indoors with a red dot, you're probably not going to notice the accuracy issues, but you're definitely going to notice that trigger. So I can start throwing parts on this thing. I can change out the pistol grip. I can get a different trigger. Um, I can put a different rail on it and all that other stuff, but I kind of like to just buy stuff where it's already good and maybe I got to make a few changes here or there for preference. Um, yeah, I... This exists. I'm Eric Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.